In other regional news, both Lebanon and Syria have declared separate ceasefires with the Islamic State. For Lebanon, the truce was called after a week-long offensive to crush the remaining extremists along the border with Syria. The pause in fighting was agreed on in order to allow Lebanon to recover the remains of its kidnapped soldiers. Meanwhile, the Syrian army, backed by Hezbollah, has been waging an offensive on the Islamic State militants and declared a ceasefire to give ISIS fighters safe passage to eastern Syria. Lebanese officials insist there's been no coordination with the Syrian army or Hezbollah, even though the offensive began and were paused at the same time. And to discuss this all further, I'm now joined by Matthew R.J. Brodsky, a senior fellow at the Security Studies Group. Matthew, thank you so much for being with us. Sure. So, quite a lot going on in the region, but let's start with this idea of two separate ceasefires, one between Syria and the Islamic State and the other one between Lebanon and the Islamic State. First of all, how did this come about and what are they trying to achieve? Well, simply what has happened is that uh, Hezbollah and the uh, Lebanese Armed Forces, the LAF, were working together in conjunction despite any calls or, or analysis to the contrary. What they managed to do was get rid of the ISIS pocket in Lebanon. Now the LAF controls the entire, uh, wouldn't call it border because it's never been demarcated between Lebanon and Syria, but that whole frontier between the two is now controlled by the LAF inside of Lebanon, and it's controlled by uh, Hezbollah and the Syrian army on the other side. So what they've done is a, is a prisoner swap to move the group of, uh, a, a prisoner swap and to move the refugees out into uh, the Dar al Zor region, all the way in eastern Syria, where it will now become a different problem. What this is is a great uh, accomplishment for Iran and for Hezbollah under the guise of the LAF, um, you know, and them working together. It's a, a bad thing for Israel and should be bad for the United States and should be seen as such. Well, Israel certainly made it clear that it does see the situation as a bad thing. And it's actually sentiments we've heard this week as the U.N. Security, uh, excuse me, the U.N. Secretary General is in Israel. We've heard Israeli Prime Minister Netanyahu pushing for the U.N. to take a stronger stance in, uh, in Lebanon against uh, advanced weaponry reaching Hezbollah. Is there any reason to think the U.N. will step in and do so? Oh, absolutely not. Just take a look at April. There you had the uh, LAF. Uh, chaperone Hezbollah down toward the border with Israel. They did it under the eyes, the watchful eyes of the UN and UNIFIL that was there. Uh, they took pictures with uh, Hezbollah and shoulder fired uh, missiles. This all occurred there. They have no idea what they're doing. Obviously, by Israeli estimates, uh, from 13,000 rockets and missiles in 2006, Hezbollah has uh, 150,000 or more. So clearly, Resolution 1701 has not been enforced, and the UN doesn't do anything. There's no reason to believe that that'll change. Uh, Netanyahu's hands are tied, and unfortunately, this all gets down to two, two things, and that's one, when does Israel decide that it has had enough and it has to do something? Or when does Iran decide that it's going to push the uh, go button so that Hezbollah is going to do something? Until the United States seems to figure out what its policy is with Iran in the region, there's little reason that Israel should believe, unfortunately, that the United States has some deeper, larger strategic plan other than crushing ISIS. Well, certainly concerns, as we've said, that we've heard from uh, Israel. Now, just very briefly, in under a minute that we have left, speaking about the U.N. in the region, obviously the U.N. has uh, tried to play a role in the region, especially in this situation in Lebanon, as we've said, and, and failed to some extent to this point. What does that mean for Israel going forward? How does Israel deal with this situation, and does it go along with international bodies? Well, I mean, Israel has to go through the motions, unfortunately, and this is what it, what it always, what it, you know, that's the position it's always in. So it has to look, I mean, there's no reason to really believe that the United Nations is going to help with a prisoner swap happening in Gaza with Hamas, but you, you have to try and you have to go through the motions. That's unfortunately the way it is, as with any, you know, that's the definition of politics, shall we say. You have to make all the correct appearances and moves before you finally end up on doing the right thing. Well, and we can only hope that all of these appearances and moves do lead to a positive outcome. And Matthew, thank you so much for joining us.
Coming up, North Korea fires a missile over Japan for the first time in nearly 20 years. We've got that story after this short break.